good in the web. I'm your man Q back again. And because this is legit Final Fantasy 7, the remake, the remastered, the reloaded, I decided that I had to, and I mean I had to, get on here and discuss, you know, pretty much my journey of Final Fantasy 7, how I got here, why I'm excited, and why that I feel that this game is a possibility if it's executed right. It might, it, it, I don't even want to speak blasphemy that it can knock off Chrono Trigger as my number one, but it can move up one inch closer to being it. My faithful tragic tale with Final Fantasy 7 starts way back in the summer of 1995. And how does it start back in the summer of 1995, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Just, 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 just chill. Just listen just for a second. Back in the day when I was transitioning from sixth grade to junior high from Los Angeles, my mom was like, look, it's crazy out here. <laughs> so we're going to move so you can get a better education and I don't have to be as stressed and worried about you being in schools and in these situations because I was living in South Central Los Angeles at the time. And a lot of pit, what you heard, a lot of it is true, but not all of it is true. But a lot of it is true. So we got up and got the hell up out of Dodge. So during that time, I was your typical, you know, gamer, if I want to call myself that. I had just got a Super Nintendo and just finally got a Sega Genesis. And what happened was... Nintendo Power, remember those things? Nintendo used to send me different video tapes and cassettes and different things promoting their latest games. In 94, I had got one a little bit before Donkey Kong Country drop. I still got the VHS somewhere. I have to find it. But they also sent me one of one of my favorite RPGs to this date in People wonder why the hell is my favorite character, one of my favorite Nintendo characters still, Geno, is Super Mario RPG. For those of y'all who are younger or have, didn't get a chance to play this 1996 classic Super Mario RPG, it's still to this day my favorite Mario game. Yes, because it's an RPG. Yes, because Mario wasn't typically just saving the princess. He did that and then it was a bigger scope, but we're not talking about Mario RPG today. Fast forward a little bit. It was a place called Video Zone that used to be right across the street from my apartment buildings I lived in. And there was a game with some crazy Dragon Ball type artwork, which I didn't even really, really know about Dragon Ball Z and stuff at that time yet. Like, I was still fresh off my geekdom. I was into comics and I was into, you know, Mario and Sonic and things like that. I hadn't fully delved in. But I picked up a game called Chrono Trigger that was on the shelf. And that was the first time I played a video game for two weeks straight. I played the game so long without sleeping and just getting up and playing, getting up and playing through that summer of 1996 and having a tape recorder. One of the reasons Aaliyah is my favorite singer of all time is because I listened to One in a Million and a lot of her tracks from taping it on the radio and then just replaying it while I was playing Chrono Trigger in 96 those those were the days and i had never experienced a plot or a story that opened up like that this game still stands the test of time here in this modern day age so imagine what it was doing in 1996 just one year removed from from dropping and not to mention at the same time final fantasy 3 otherwise known as Final Fantasy VI, that was in Japan, which is universally known now, Final Fantasy VI, had just dropped as well, but I didn't have any knowledge of it. So, jump back into the story where I meet Pietro, which we called him Petey, and Daniel. I come to find out um, I was catching a bus to school, uh, so the school had started again, and I got ready to catch the bus to school, and um, I remember meeting a little short kid, end up being Daniel. Um, I end up meeting him. And what happens is he discusses and tells me 
we were talking about video games and stuff, and I said, I went to go, I played this game called Chrono Trigger or Chrono Trigger, and I was explaining how hyped I was about the game, and that I seen somebody else's save spots on there, but I didn't mess with it. Like, even in in my, my virgin RPG-ness, I still knew not to mess with somebody else's save spot, because it was a rented game, like, I didn't know. Like, I went to play on it, and it was so far ahead of me, I didn't know what the hell was going to go down. Long story short, that ended up being Daniel's save spot, and Instantly, he and I, we're still friends to this day, became friends. That is like his second favorite game behind Metal Gear Solid. But for Chrono Trigger, for me, it was my favorite game. So he was still running the game and holding on to it. Uh, so that's why I didn't get a chance to play it anymore. But he said he had a friend that lived in the same apartment building. And his name was Petey. And then he had the game. And if I talked to him, he'd let me borrow it. Well, within a matter of days, all of us were friends. And one weekend, Petey came over with a box of video games and dropped these video games to me and said, you can play them. And in that case was Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore, Lufia, and one, one more game. Oh, and Earthbound. So I ate these RPGs up like a fat kid does cake. The first game I played was Chrono Trigger. Now, Fates would have been a little different if I was able to play Chrono Trigger behind Final Fantasy VI. Because then my favorite game might have changed. Because Final Fantasy VI, by all if ands, buts, and equations, could literally be considered the GOAT game as well. Along in the same pool as Final Fantasy VII and Chrono Trigger. Which leads me to Final Fantasy 7. So that was in 96. Just one year later, the commercial started dropping for Final Fantasy 7. Never before had I seen that. Never before had anyone seen FMV full motion videos. And the PlayStation was a brand spanking new system. I was like Vegeta, I had to have it. I had to experience it. Ah! So I traded Every single one of the games that gave me credit at Software Etc, because remember, y'all might not remember, but there used to be competition with GameStop, and then GameStop just basically slurped them all into one big blump. But when that game came out, all I did was hear how great it was, and that it was the same company that had made my favorite game, which was Chrono Trigger. So I had just beat Chrono Trigger, had moved on to Secret of Mana, because at the time... I was borrowing Chrono Trigger. Daniel came to me and started playing Final Fantasy VI. So while I was playing Chrono Trigger and Earthbound and Secret of Mana, he was playing Final Fantasy VI, which his favorite character was Shadow and Locke. I always remember that. And I didn't get a chance to jump in. And that's when Seven came in. So right before Seven came in, I remember it was a couple of months, I had got a summer job. And my mom was like, if you buy your clothes... For the summer job and your shoes, you can spend all the rest of your money on whatever else you want to do. Now, I was pissed off at the time because I'm like, why I got to spend all my money on on clothes? And stuff? Ain't that your responsibility? But, of course, I ain't going to say nothing to my mom. I ain't going to say nothing to my mom, you know, like that. But she was teaching me responsibility at the time. And I'm really glad that she did. So, shout out to mama. Mama. So, I went and worked very hard. <laughs> remember that summer. And had enough money and penny pinched enough not only to buy a Nintendo 64 and Mario Kart, but also to buy a PlayStation. But no Final Fantasy 7 because at the time right when it launched, no stores had them. However, software etc had one copy left. The only bad thing about it was I didn't have no more money for it. Not enough for $60. Not $60 at the time for it. So I had to trade in Bugs Bunny's Rabbit Rampage, Tiny Toon Adventures, I love me some Tiny Toons, Maximum Carnage, what was it? Vector Man, Toe Jam and Earl. These are quality games for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Sonic and Knuckles, which gave me $35, $37, and then I had to pay the remainder, the rest of the money. And finally, I got it. I had it. I experienced it. It's not the game. I, I, I didn't want to go walk in and get the game. But I had to have it. I got it. I went home, 
and I played the game. That was my first PlayStation game, Final Fantasy VII, and played the game all the way until I got to Rufus, not really still fully understanding the whole scope of RPGs and just amazed at how great the graphics look for 1997 from going to sprites to th to to pre-rendered graphics and full motion videos the opening scene of Eris the 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 the, the, the music the pacing of the game the you're not the typical hero coming from home it was more than i could take at that time for a young tender preteen it was too much it was so much so that I forgot to buy a memory card because previous games on Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, I didn't need a memory card. Also, they were like 20 bucks or something at the time. And I only had enough money just to buy the game. I had nothing else to trade. I was gone. I, I, I didn't have nothing else to trade. So my mom eventually ended up buying me a memory card. Not too many days later. But I do remember getting stuck in that pyramid on top of the, uh, on top of the, uh, uh, on top of one of the reactors where Reno fights you, where you're Barrett, Tifa, and, and Cloud, and I did not know for the life of me to just change the cursor and hit one of my party members so I can get out of that. And I lost all the hours that I had done without the memory card for that. We're going to fast forward some time because at the moment, Petey had already had the game. Daniel had already had the game. But one thing about me, and it still stands to this day, is when I play an RPG, especially a good RPG, I make love to the game, y'all. It's full play involved. There's chocolate, strawberries, and cherries. There's back rubs, massages. If you want your feet done, Tifa, I do that for you, too. That's how I play the games. I talk to every NPC. I check every corner of the game. I want to experience everything that 60 bucks that I'm doing can do. I want to immerse myself as much as in the world as I can. However, I'm one of the only people that think like that. Because Petey beat the game within only a few days. And came to me while we're playing the game. While I'm still playing the game. And tells me while sipping on a Pepsi. Eris dies, Quentin. Oh, and no, this isn't a Pepsi. This is sparkling water. I don't drink soda no more. Eris dies? Now, I had originally liked Tifa more in the first place because of the whole story and the the little summit scene meeting out by the water, the water pump. I, I I, mean, the childhood sweethearts and friends, Cloud going out there to do something for Tifa and then try to be his hero fascinated me. It was a deeper relationship. And even at the time, Tifa had, you know, assets that... I didn't even see like that in video games at that time. But even more so, she wasn't your traditional heroine, which Eris was within the story, which is your nicey nice healing type of character or your moral type character, Marley, Meryl, Marley, whatever you want to call from Chrono Trigger, or your typical white mage or Princess Peach type character. She could hold her own. She had hands, feet. Knees, toes, elbows. She used what she needed to get the job done. And I loved her for that. But it took steam and something out of me and ruined the story for me. For many years that I found out that Eris was going to die. So at that particular point in time, I decided to stop the game. And I scrounged up the next little amount of money that I had and did some little research at school because they had computers then I ain't that old <laughs> and was able to find out about the game shark download the codes bought a game shark and I resurrected Eris she wasn't on the world map and she was not on the field 
or I mean, on, on the last battle. So she wasn't in the world map, and she wasn't on the on the last battle. So you can't see her. It kind of glitches the game, and you'll just have two party members, and you can't just do two party members against Sephiroth. That's ludicrous. That's blasphemy. That's every other kind of name that I can't think of right now. So you know, you ain't got to geek fax me at the particular moment. But I remember cheating, and I beat the game because I was heartbroken. Not so much that. I loved Eris more than Tifa. Not so much that Eris was my favorite character, but so much so that such a key critical part of the story was ruined for me. And this is one of the reasons that I never, never, ever, ever am that dude that likes to spoil things for different people. I've been spoiled with Six Cents. I've been spoiled, almost spoiled myself with Fight Club. I've been spoiled with Gurren Logan, Final Fantasy VII. It's so many different situations with someone who's told me power that's told me something. And, and that's why I, I don't like to spoil things. And I, I just, I just, I, I can't, I can't. Matter of fact, same dude, PD spoiled Lufia to me one of my favorite super nintendo games classic game because i was taking too long with the game so he decided to tell me who was who and the ending of the game and yeah so along with resurrecting eris i figured why not just max out the materia max out every stat in everything so my first couple times beating the game i beat the game the game on frost preset Blah, 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 blah. false pretexts where I really beat it to see what happened but it wasn't through my own merit later on right before Avid Children came out I decided to go all the way back and play the game again got all the way back to the game all the way there to the last to the northern crater and everything and about $3,000 worth of my games were stolen from me so I was a little bitter and hurt to say the least. So it took me a couple years from probably about 2006 to 2008 uh, really to get fully to recover from losing so many games. I had every RPG on PlayStation, every RPG on PlayStation. I think I was missing like one or two. All the RPGs on GameCube, Super Nintendo. Thankfully, my Super Nintendo collection stayed fit cool but every game was in a binder and i basically got set up and all my games stolen ps2 dreamcast i had shinmu oh my god oh the original shinmu skies of arcadia grandia 2 uh what was that other game that gamecube had the little robot armor but a whole bunch of games a whole bunch of everything and it was gone so when the Nintendo Switch decided that they were going to redo Final Fantasy VII and put it on a console that I, I love Nintendo, and I was hoping that it would have came out on Nintendo years and years and generations ago, when the whole Dolphin and Sony and Nintendo was merging together, I would have loved it to do that. But Nintendo had a different direction, and Sony had a different direction at the time too. But when those two united, and it was only 15 bucks, I had to get it. I had to get it. So just recently, I streamed it on Twitch and finally beat Final Fantasy VII. Straight up. No ifs, ands, no cheating, no buts about it. And that's why it was so big of a deal for me to beat it, especially to beat it before Final Fantasy VII R. The game through about five times. Once I beat it straight through, which was recently, and I'm so proud. I'm so proud. But it's one of my all-time favorite games from the story to the sequels to Hanabaru Sakagachi to Tetsuru Daruma to uh, 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 I can't remember his name. Was it Natsumai? No, God, I'm butchering his name. The composer from everyone from the scenario writer. How much work and diligence and time that they put into this game. I just it's just so many facets of Final Fantasy seven 
from DID and mental health to breaking the trope of your traditional female protagonist to actually having a brother in the main party and as stereotypical as Barry was at first, they've tamed him down a lot and actually gave him more of a world weariness sense. He just happens to be a brother saying it. So, I'm so excited. So excited. <laughs> All the other Final Fantasy VII goodies, RPG, games, notes, and everything else on Twitch at The Geek Show. And as always in a web, I'll holler at y'all later. Remember to eat, geek, sleep, and repeat. Oh, and thank you for my elongated Final Fantasy VII journey. Um, it's crazy because... I could have legit probably went 30, 40 more minutes talking about it. I'll hell with y'all later. Peace. <laughs>